Hi guys, welcome to Take a DIY. In this video, I'm going to look at the Autura Laser Master 2, which is a laser engraving machine. It measures 550 by 570 millimeters with an engraving area of 400 by 430 millimeters. It has three different laser module options, 7 watts, 15 watts, and 20 watts. I'm testing the 20 watt model. The machine is supplied as a kit, which is relatively easy to assemble. The frame is constructed from 2020 aluminium profile or extrusion. The gantry is partially assembled. The X-axis carriage runs along the gantry rail on V-wheels and it's driven by a NEMA 17 stepper motor, belt and tooth pulley. For the Y-axis, the gantry runs along the side rails on V-wheels. Belts and tooth pulleys on each side are linked by a drive shaft and this is driven by a NEMA 17 stepper motor. Limit switches are installed on the X and Y-axis and soft limits are used to prevent the machine being driven beyond its physical limits. The limit switches are also used for homing, which is how the machine identifies its initial starting position. As I mentioned earlier, there are three laser module options, 20 watts, 15 watts and 7 watts. These values refer to the power input rather than the optical power output. The actual optical power outputs are 1.2 to 1.6 watts, 4 to 4.5 watts, and five to five and a half watts. The module uses a 445 nanometer diode laser, which operates in the visible light spectrum with a color somewhere between violet and blue. This type of laser can only engrave colored materials and cannot engrave white or transparent materials, at least not without employing some tricks. The laser module lens focuses the laser output into a spot on the surface of the material. The stepper motors and laser are connected to a controller PCB this is a Gerbil based controller with a version number of 1.2F. Gerbil is open source firmware that inputs G code commands and controls stepper motors and lasers. Gerbil normally runs on an 80 mega 328p 8 bit microcontroller, but in this case, Autour have used an STM32 F103 CAT6 microcontroller. The STM32 is a 32 bit device with more memory and a faster clock speed. The advantage of this is that the controller can operate at a faster step rate and can accommodate additional features. Some additional safety features have been implemented in the firmware. Firstly, a sensor on the PCB detects movement and shuts down the laser if the machine is jogged. Secondly, to prevent fire, the laser turns off if the computer isn't responding. The USB cable is disconnected or after a period of inactivity. On the PCB, there is a power switch, a reset switch, a DC power socket, and a USB connection for a computer. The USB connection requires a VCP or virtual COM port driver to be installed on the computer. The stepper motors are driven by two HR4988SQ stepper motor drivers. The control is connected to the stepper motors and laser by a wiring loom and power is supplied by a wall wart type power adapter with a 12 volt 3 amp output. The kit comes with a printed copy of the safety instructions, a reference table for different materials and a part list. The rest of the instructions and software are downloaded from a Dropbox and they cover the assembly of the machine, driver and software installation. Also included are tools, a marker pen, brush, some thin plywood samples and most importantly safety goggles. This is a class 4 laser and it will easily destroy your eyesight so it's really important to wear laser safety glasses when operating this machine. Now let's move on to the build, starting with the base frame. This is constructed from the four lengths of 2020 aluminium profile. First we're going to join a 540 and 460 mm profile section using a corner bracket and an M5 25 mm set screw. The ends of the 460 mm profile section are tapped to accept M5 set screws. The corner brackets slide into the channel on the 540 mm section, fully inserting in only one direction. And the 540 mm lengths are drilled with a wider clearance hole on one side to accommodate the head of the set screw. With that in mind, the corner bracket is slid into a 540mm section, a 460mm section is slid onto the corner bracket, and an M5 25mm set screw is inserted through the hole and screwed into the end of the 460mm section. Next, a second 460mm section is secured to the opposite side, the frame is flipped over, and two T-nuts are installed in the outside channels of each 460mm section.
Two corner brackets are slid into the ends of the remaining 540mm section and with some careful positioning the 540mm section is slid onto the end of the frame and secured with an M5 25mm set screw on each side. To check if the frame is square the diagonal measurements are compared to see if they're equal and then the corner brackets are tightened. Next the gantry is slid onto the frame Now we need two acrylic legs, a tooth belt, two M5 washers and four M5 10mm set screws. The tooth belt is inserted through the slot in the acrylic leg. The leg is secured to the frame with an M5 10mm set screw and the T-nut that we installed earlier. The end of the belt is secured with an M5 washer and an M5 10mm set screw into the tapped end of the profile section. The belt is now threaded under the V-wheel. Over the pulley. And back under the second V-wheel. Tweezers help to thread the belt through. The belt is threaded through the slot in the second leg. The leg is secured to the frame with an M5 10mm set screw. The belt is then lightly tensioned while being secured with an M5 washer and an M5 10mm set screw. The belt on the opposite side is installed in the same way. Next we need a limit switch, M5 10mm set screw and a T-nut. A T-nut is inserted into the channel on the top of the profile section. The belt is inserted through the slot in the limit switch assembly. The belt is lightly tensioned and secured with an M5 10mm set screw. Next the controller assembly is attached to the frame using two M5 10mm set screws. The x-axis stepper motor is attached to the carriage assembly with four M3 8mm screws. The laser module is attached to the acrylic plate with two M3 8mm screws. And then it's attached to the carriage with four M5 cap nuts. The wiring loom is connected to the x-axis stepper motor. And the laser module. Then to the Y axis printed circuit board and stepper motor. The limit switch is plugged into the controller, followed by the two connectors from the wiring loom. The USB cable is plugged in and also the power supply. The software for the laser engraver is downloaded from a Dropbox. It's contained in a zipped file called LaserMaster 2. First the USB device driver is installed. The USB cable is plugged in. The power is turned on by pressing the power button. 
and the laser will automatically enter a homing cycle. We can check that the device driver is working correctly by running Device Manager, expanding Ports, Common LPT, and selecting the ST Microelectronics Virtual Com port. Next, we need some software to control the laser. Laser Gerbil is a good option, it's free and open source. I'm going to download it directly from the Laser Gerbil website. Autura have included some custom buttons in the download. To install them, right click in the buttons area, import custom buttons. The file is located in the Laser Gerbil control software directory, and then select the yes to import each button. Settings can be found under the Gerbil menu. The firmware type should be set to Gerbil, connection protocol to USB serial, streaming mode to buffered, threading mode to ultra-fast, issue detector selected, and soft reset selected. Then we select the correct COM port, set the board rate to 115,200, and press the connect button. If all is well, a message will appear on the console. The unlock button can be used to send a $x kill alarm lock command to Gerbil. This doesn't lose the position. The jog key should now be working. The step size can be changed. And also the speed. The home button returns the axes to the zero point. The zero point can be set to a new position and the home button returns the axes to the zero point that we just set. The homing button initiates a new homing cycle. This resets the machine coordinates but it doesn't reset the zero point. The reset button issues a control X soft reset command which immediately halts and safely resets Gerbil. The arrow buttons can be used to move the axes to predefined locations. The laser button can be used to switch the laser on and off for focusing. And the laser power level can be set. The setting button sends a dollar dollar command, which displays the Gerbil configuration. And it's also visible from the Gerbil configuration menu. Refresh updates the values from the Gerbil controller. Export saves a copy of the Gerbil configuration to a file. Import loads a configuration from a file and write updates the Gerbil controller. Also under the Gerbil menu, there is a material database which contains setting values for different types of material. To allow easy positioning, the boundary button draws a frame around the engraving with the laser. The speed and power of the laser can be overridden by left clicking on the overrides display. Laser Gerbil can import image files with several different conversion methods such as line to line tracing, dithering, vectorize and centerline. I'm going to use dithering. The G-code command used to turn the laser on can be configured. M3 is typically used for cutting and M4 for engraving. The material database can be used to automatically select the engraving speed and power. and the engraving size specified. Next, the laser dot is focused on the material, the axis zeroed, and the boundary button is used to show where the material should be positioned. To send the G-code to the machine, the Run Program button is selected. The laser ablation process creates potentially harmful smoke and fumes, and so ventilation is important. I'm using an extractor fan as a temporary solution.
Laser Gerbil can also import G-code and SVG or scalable vector graphics files. It doesn't have any inbuilt image editing tools, so an external editor is required. A good free open source option is Inkscape, so let's try that. First I'm going to set the document size to the size of the laser bed, 400 by 430 millimeters, and zoom the image to show the page. Next I create a text object, and resize it. And when I'm happy with the size, convert the text object into a path. Next I'm going to draw a box around the text. And save the SVG file. In Laser Gerbil, the file is opened, the speed and maximum power values entered, selecting Create generates the G code, the number of passes are selected, and then the G code is sent to the machine with Run Program. This is 5mm thick foam board. The back edge was a little bit untidy, so it could probably have done with another pass. An alternative software package is Lightburn, it costs $40 and it's available as a 30 day trial. Once it's installed, the Altura laser must be added as a new device. Find my laser scans for the connected lasers and then it can be added. You can set the origin position and whether to auto home the machine on startup to connect to the machine select the COM port. Settings can be found under the edit menu. The speed units can be set. To focus the laser a laser fire button can be enabled from the device settings under the edit menu. The button will only appear after a restart and it can now be found in the move window on the right hand side. The jog keys can be used to move the axis. Pressing the control key at the same time gives small steps. Pressing the shift key gives large steps. This is a plywood sample from the kit. The fire button enables the laser. The power level can be changed. The origin can be set. The colours at the bottom denote different layers, each layer can have different engraving settings. Let's engrave some text. For the black layer that contains the text, I'm going to set the mode to line and fill. Set the speed to 3000 millimeters per minute and the power to 80%. The line interval to 0.2 millimeters and the number of passes to 1. 
Let's draw a box around the text, this time using the blue layer. We just want to engrave the outline of the box, so the mode is set to line. Power is set to 80%. And speed 3000 millimeters per minute. Now let's engrave a circle. The red layer is selected. Unlocking the padlock allows the aspect ratio to be changed. The mode is set to line, the speed to 200 millimeters per minute, and the power to 90%. So this will be a much deeper burn, and it might even cut all the way through. I'm just going to resize it. Now we can use the frame button to see where the laser is going to engrave. Holding the shift button enables the laser. To send the G-code to the machine, press start. Images can also be engraved with light burn. I'm going to try engraving a ceramic tile using the Norton method. This is where you spray a white tile with flat white paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum All Surface Flat White. Just giving the tiles a light even coat and then leaving them to dry overnight. The image is imported into light burn by selecting File, Import, selecting the image file and Open. Closing the padlock keeps the aspect ratio while the image is resized. The tile is 100mm square, so I'm going to change the height to 98mm. The position is set. Now we can modify the cut settings. This did take a bit of experimentation. The speed I have set to 600mm per minute, the power to 100%, the line interval to 0.25mm, and the image mode to Jarvis dithering. Grayscale doesn't work with this method. The frame button is used to check that the engraving will be correctly positioned on the tile. The laser had already been focused earlier on, so now the image can be sent to the laser by pressing the start key. The white paint is removed with thinners and a scraper. And that's the image burned into the tile. I'm going to try it again, this time with a line interval of 0.1mm and a scan angle of 90 degrees so that the laser moves vertically. This is because the laser output is rectangular and it's thinner in the vertical direction so I think I might be able to get better image resolution. That's the result. 
and the two side by side. In real life, both look really good. Some of the other things that I've tried are engraving a mirror. This is a glass mirror tile. It was engraved from the back with the text flipped horizontally in light burn. Afterwards I cleaned the back with dishwashing soap and a toothbrush. I also tried engraving black acrylic. Engraving leather. Engraving painted steel. This is part of a PC case. Engraving denim cotton jeans. Cutting black acrylic. The cutting performance can be improved by using air assist. This is where a jet of air removes the ablated material and it results in deeper, cleaner cuts. I 3D printed a nozzle that fits over the laser focus ring. The tube is connected to a compressor. This is cutting black acrylic with the air assist. I enlarged the end of the cone because it had a tendency to obscure the laser, but unfortunately this did reduce its effectiveness. Nonetheless, it still gave a cleaner cut. Next was six millimeter or quarter inch pine wood. This cut easily. I decided to try a different air assist setup, this time a 3D printed bracket holding a brass tube with a 1mm 3D printer nozzle screwed into the end. This is cutting 6mm or quarter inch plywood. Not all plywood cuts well, some does and some doesn't. Next I had a go at cutting a denim cotton jean material. And finally cutting one millimeter thick leather. So hopefully that's given you an idea of what you can do with the machine. I've had it for a couple of months now and it works well. The laser can cut and engrave dark or coloured materials, but it can't engrave transparent materials. It does take a bit of experimentation to find the right settings. Air assist is a good addition if you want to cut. And ventilation is absolutely essential. 
Laser Gerbil might be all you need in terms of software, but I'd also recommend trying Lightburn because of the built-in editing and layering. Auteur's use of an STM32 microcontroller rather than the usual 80 mega 8-bit microcontroller is interesting, as it should allow large image files to be engraved at a quicker rate. If you're only interested in engraving and not cutting, I would recommend selecting one of the lower power options, as the 55 watt laser that comes with the 20 watt model has a larger spot size than the lower power models. The lower power lasers are also quite a bit cheaper. Overall this seems to be a good product, I've certainly enjoyed using it. If you're interested, the link is in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.